the Bank of Scotland. And where better to talk about money than in the shadow of an ancient banking institution? Jane Austen had to finance Pride and Prejudice herself, whereas I earned an advance of £150 from my debut. My second novel, The Inheritance, earned a £1,000 advance, while dear Jane only received £110. My three novels were officially translated into French by a reputable publisher, but hers were available only in pirated editions. But this isn't about settling a personal score. This is about all of us women whose writings have been rubbed out of history. I'm not the only one who's been cast out into the cold, erased from the roles of honour, stripped of my reputation. And I did have quite the reputation, you know. From duchesses to professors, from judges to peers of the realm, my readers knew what they were talking about. But when it came to building the biggest writer's monument in the world, nobody listened to the readers. It was the critics who told the men of power what to think. So the one who got the great Gothic pinnacle towering over Princess Street was Walter Scott. Paid for by a kind of 19th century Kickstarter. Except that the city council completely misjudged how much people wanted it. And they ended up having literally to go door to door begging for funds. If you gave a guinea or more, you got a print of the monument, just like any other crowdfunder. Now, eyes left. See what the people got for them.